Hello everyone, welcome back to Peggy or playing every game ever. Today on stream we finished Visage. And if you want to know what Peggy is, it is where on stream I'm trying to play as many games as possible and I'm just taking requests from people who watch and they can just request whatever game they want and I will play it. We have a lot of horror games coming up for Halloween. Next is going to be FNAF Security Breach in the DLC. So Visage, before we get into the actual review, do you will you like this game? Do you want to play it? If you like horror games and you like like the normal horror games where it's like because most horror games are like walking around, getting jump scared, like doing like little like picking up stuff, but this adds on to it and there's a lot of atmospheric stuff and puzzles in this game that definitely adds to just the normal horror game trope of just like walking around and picking up items and getting jump scared. So this game like is somewhat similar to that and it takes it up a notch and it is I think heavily PT inspired. I don't know, I know some about PT but I'm pretty sure they took PT and then they tried to like make it their own. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you should definitely play this game. It is definitely a good horror game. And it is actually scary. So getting it into the review now. And if that sounds interesting to you, I'll definitely go play it right now. Stop this video. So getting to the review now, let's start with the pros. It is actually scary because it takes place like in a house. So it, that's the only kind of horror games that really scare me is something that could like technically happen in real life because it takes place in like a familiar environment. And the, the overall visual design is pretty good. Um, the actual like graphics themselves aren't like the most polished or whatever but it was made by a pretty small team but it doesn't like it doesn't look hyper realistic but it looks good enough where it doesn't like most of the time it doesn't like take you out of it because it looks like so bad you're like because if a horror game doesn't look realistic then you can't really immerse yourself and like try to be that character and get like even more scared but this game looks good enough where you can be immersed into your character and the atmosphere is really good there's a lot of atmospheric stuff that happens in this game that i would have never thought would have happened and like the atmospheric and gameplay mechanics there is some interesting gameplay mechanics and a lot of different stuff happens in the environment around you as you're playing it is just a very interesting overall. And there's also a bunch of unexpected stuff that there's some like humor, which I did not, un I didn't really know, or it caught me off guard. And it does definitely, I mean, it is a bit weird because it kind of like takes away from the horror, but then it like puts you back in. So it, it's just kind of like a break from the horror. And it doesn't really take away from the horror because it's still like even after you see funny the funny stuff happen in the game you're still scared after so it's not like it takes away the the horror at least for me personally and there's a bunch of easter eggs that you can optionally do in this game stuff like i believe there is doom silent hill um johnny what was what that movie with johnny here's johnny uh, I don't think it's Shaq, Silent Shaq. No, it's Silent Hill. You know what I'm talking about. Here's Johnny X. And. Yep. So, into the cons. The animations and the look of the human characters. 
because like I said, the graphics aren't super realistic, but they're not too bad, except for, I would say, on the characters. Like the people don't really look like people very much. Because I know it's, it's really hard to make a realistic person, like their animations don't really look fluid and like their hair and stuff doesn't really look, it's just not as detailed as like say like this couch <laughs> or this clock. All of the atmospheric things are a lot more detailed than like the characters are. Which I can definitely understand because like characters are very hard to make and look correctly. And what I'm mixed on is some of the voice acting is either really good or not very good. It seems like maybe some of the stuff from like the early days of the game, the voice acting, they maybe didn't switch out. Because all the new voice acting is good. I believe that's what happened. So if they would... I know that kind of... It might take away from the voice actors who did it. In the beginning, they might not want to take that, which I understand. But it was very weird, because... At least the first voice, like, real voice acting that I got introduced to was not very good, but then... I was surprised when the rest of the game's voice acting was good. So that's why I'm a bit mixed on that. But overall the voice acting was good. And some of the puzzles were good, but some of them were also really hard to figure out. But I did have chat help me and um, other stuff like that. So without that it would have taken a while. And then that kind of goes into my last thing, which is I got lost, which at the beginning of the game, I got lost because I didn't really understand how the game worked. And I missed like a bunch of obvious stuff, but there's some stuff that wasn't very obvious that I don't really know how I would have found without help. But there was also some stuff that I missed that I do not know. Um, how I missed. And it was fairly obvious, so that part I'm not going to detriment them for. But to be honest, I did look up, I did have people in chat that have played the game multiple times help me, and I did look up guides sometimes. Because this game can either be a eight hour game if you know where to go, or like a 30 to 40 hour game if you don't so I mean it's up to you if you are fine with looking up guides or if you like exploring but personally for me this game was actually like it was so scary for me that I wanted to be done I didn't want to just wander around and get jump scared a ton so I did look up guides and I also didn't want to just get be lost for so long because in the beginning I was lost for like literal up to like an hour at a time I didn't know what to do which some of it was my fault like I said but overall this game is actually scary the atmosphere and the gameplay mechanics and how they deal with all that is very good and it just has a little bit of gripe with the getting lost and the animations and look of the human characters but overall it is a very good and refreshing horror game that I didn't know I was gonna like so much I really think that one last closing thought is that if you think that looking up guides is okay like you don't mind it then this game is going to be almost the perfect horror game I would say it would be like a 9 out of 10 but if you don't like looking up guides and you think that it's inexcusable for a game to be so or to like have parts that are confusing or don't make 
like perfect sense or places where you can get easily lost and spend a bunch of time on. If you have problems with that without a guide, then you probably will not like this game too much. You still like the game, but you'll spend a lot of time wandering around. So me personally, I am in kind of a mid in between for that. I think the game was really good, but I also had guides, like people guides and a couple, like a little bit of help from the internet because I did not want to just wander around forever. So, and I am fine with looking up guides, but obviously I would prefer the game to be, to have like hints and puzzles with enough clarity to be able to solve it without having to look up a guide. But I'm still going to give it a really high score. I'm going to give it an 8.2. It was an 8, but the ending was really good. The things that happened, the variety. I mean, it's just a good ending that has this. It is pretty satisfying. It is a bit like vague, but it is, it's like halfway between like vague and pretty concrete. Like you can come to a conclusion on what happened. But this, it's a very good game. If I were you, then I would probably just have a guide open. And if you get lost for more than like 20 minutes, then just look up what the next step is and then shut off the guide. That is what I did for most of this or ask someone in chat. But if you don't think that, if you want to do it all on your own, I think you are going to be wandering around for a while, but maybe I'm just not good at this type of game. Let me know if either, if anyone has played this game without a guide and tell me how long it took you. I'll be really interested to see. Thanks guys for watching.